Hello students, in this video, I am going to discuss about energy and momentum method. So before going to start this particular chapter, I will tell you some points which is related to energy and momentum method. As we know, we are discussing about kinetics of motion. So if we talk about kinetics of motion, so kinetics of motion generally describe the motion of any object and here we consider all the causes of motion. If we define motion, so motion we usually describe as the change in position of any object or any body with respect to any other object. Suppose if we have a particular object which is resting on a floor and this object is subjected to one external force. Suppose this is the force and this arrow is representing the direction of force. So, if we apply this particular external force on this object and if this force is greater than the resistance force which is applicable in opposite direction or if it is greater than the frictional force between this object and the second object that is our flow. So, if this F is greater in that case this particular object will move in the direction of force. So, this will be our direction of motion. So, this arrow is representing the direction of motion. So, this object is changing its position with respect to floor or if we consider this floor as the second object. So, this object is changing its position with respect to second object. So, here by this way we describe the motion. Relative change in the position of object or change in position of object with respect to any other object is describing the motion. Now, motion we mainly describe in two terms. One is the kinematics and another is the kinetics. So, here first if we define the kinematics. So, this is the condition of motion. So, our object will be in motion or our object will move. Either it is rectilinear motion or it is curvilinear motion or it is rotation. There are three types of motion we consider rectilinear motion, curvilinear motion and rotation. So, in kinematics, we describe the motion of object but we don't consider the causes of motion. So, what is the main cause of motion? So, here if we see the main cause of motion, so force is always considerable as the main cause of motion. So, here we can say if we apply force on any object, that particular object will move in the suitable condition. But in kinematics, we don't consider causes of motion. We consider the motion or the movement of object. But here we don't define motion with causes of motion. So, if we see the causes of motion, so main cause of motion we consider force. Then another causes are energy, momentum, work. So, these are main causes of motion. So, here we don't describe the motion with causes of motion. So, how we describe the motion? We usually describe the motion with, so we describe the motion with displacement, velocity, acceleration as well as we can also consider time in kinematics. Now, if we define kinetic term, so kinetic of motion is defining the motion or describing the motion with causes of motion. So here we consider all causes of motion like force, momentum, work, etc. Here we will use the concept of velocity, acceleration, displacement, time, everything. But here we will consider main causes of motion like force, energy, momentum and work. So this is the main concept of kinetics of motion. Now our main topic is energy and momentum method. So, if we define the energy method and momentum method, so what thing we should know? So, first we are going to define energy method. So, we should know the concept of work and we should know the types of energy and we should know the concepts of energy. So, these things we should know if we are defining the energy method. 
now if we are defining momentum method so we should know the concept of momentum we should know the concept of impulse force and we should know the relationship between the impulse with motion So one by one, I will describe these terms. First, I will describe the concept and the relation between the work and energy and different type of energy you should know that is kinetic energy, potential energy. And we should know about the concept of momentum. So what is momentum? How we describe momentum? How we define the impulse force and the relation between the impulse force and the momentum as well as the relationship between the impulse force and motion. So these concepts we should know if we are studying energy and momentum method. Now, if we talk about previous concepts, so previous concepts was based on the motion of particle and that motion of particle we usually determine by the Newton's law of motion or Newton's second law. So this is our Newton's second law where F equals to MA we consider as the Newton second law where F is the force, M is the mass and A is the acceleration. Now, now here we are going to discuss about method of work and energy and method of impulse and momentum. So if we talk about method of work and energy or method of energy basically it is called. So it is directly related to four terms. It is related to force, it is related to mass, it is related to velocity and it is related to displacement. But if we talk about method of impulse and momentum, so some terms are common here. It is also related to force, it is related to mass and it is related to velocity. But here the fourth term will change. The fourth term is Time. So it is basically related to force, mass, velocity and time. So here we have to define these terms to define the energy method and momentum method. Now here we can describe the motion by three terms. So these are the three terms by which we describe the motion. So first term, when we are describing the motion with force and acceleration. So in terms of force and acceleration, we will use our formula that is summation of F equals to MA, where summation of F we can define as the resultant force. If we are applying number of force on any object, so first we need to define the resultant for that particular object or for number of forces and we have to equate or we have to define that resultant by the product of mass and acceleration. So this is our formula which is defining the Newton second law of motion. And this term we have discussed earlier. Now if we talk about the second term by which we describe the motion that is velocity and displacement. So this is somewhat related to kinematic term. Now, if we are defining the motion with respect to velocity and displacement, so this particular term we will define by the work and energy principle. So here we have to define the work and energy principle either in terms of work or in terms of energy. Now the third term is velocity and time. So if we are defining the motion with velocity and time, so it is representing the kinetics. And uh, here in kinetics, we consider both work and energy as well as the concept of velocity and time. So this is defined by the impulse and momentum principle or impulse and momentum method. So this equation is generally representing the impulse and momentum method which is defined by the impulse force or impulsive force. So here we need to discuss these two terms velocity and displacement terms which is related to work and energy and here second term which we have to discuss that is the velocity and time. Thank you so much.